Hey, Doc. Hey, Jen. Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Wednesday. I'm veteran coach Jen McDonald. I'm hosting today with... I'm veteran coach Mike Smith. It's a pleasure to join you, Jen. I'm so excited to be uh, hosting today with you. You're legendary. <laughs> and this is my first experience actually getting to host with you. So yeah. I've been really looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. No, you. I've mentioned before your uh, enthusiasm uh, is infectious and it's necessary as we, uh, I know you offer elite service for our uh, members and some that maybe are, are not members yet. Uh, so looking forward to a good uh, hour uh, of information for sure. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, today we're going to present for you some information on the Camp Lejeune exposure and presumptive conditions. Um, but before we get started, um, we're going to ask our guests, um, if you're tuning in, use the chat. Um, let us know where you're watching from. Um, let us know a little bit about your service. And if you're already working with a coach, give your coach a shout out. Um, we always appreciate that. So just kind of let us know where, um, where you're at mm -hmm. and uh, maybe where you're at a little bit in your, in your process. Yeah. Um, so I'll let um, Coach Mike tell him a little bit about himself. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that, uh, Coach Jen. And so, yeah, just to reiterate, uh, let us know where you guys are checking in from, what branch you serve, what years you serve. Um, again, I'm, I'm uh, veteran coach uh, Mike Smith. Um, I am not a veteran uh, myself, but I've been coaching uh, for many years. My uh, professional background initially uh, is in podiatry. Uh, I'm actually a, a foot surgeon uh, by trade, um, but after coaching many years and invested in my efforts and energy in helping veterans, um, you know, it was by virtue of some of these uh, you know, presumptive and unusual things that you just can introduce to to, to helping veterans in this manner, uh, uh, Jen. So really, again, excited to talk about some things that might not always get talked about um, on today's live uh, call. But that's just a bit about myself. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this is something that there's a lot of gray area with the presumptives or the, per the perception of gray area with presumptives. Um, so we really want to kind of just, just lay out um, the, the exact information. Um, a little bit about me. I also I'm not a veteran. I'm the daughter, wife, and mother of United States Marines. Um, my father-in-law is a uh, is a, an Army Vietnam vet. Um, so military is in my family, also professionally and in my community. Spent several years working one-on-one -on -one with veterans related to healthcare, healthcare benefits, um, and in the community for anything that they may need, um, homelessness benefits. Um, my husband's a former VA Raider, so I've got that unique perspective available to me from the other side of the desk. So um, I bring a lot um, as far as compassion um, and eagerness to working with my veterans. And I'll be honest, um, this is the most fulfilling role professionally I've ever been in. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the wins and the celebration um, and being able to finally affect positive change um, for my veterans is just overwhelming. Um, yeah. This is what we get to do every day. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, that's really awesome. You know, and, and we'll get started just in a, in, a, in a minute or so after the hour, letting veterans kind of filter in. But Jen, I think that's I think that's so amazing. And sometimes it can almost sound like uh, like movie script like about like working and working in this capacity for, for veterans, but you know, you know, not unlike yourself, it is very fulfilling um, and it never gets old, uh, you know, uh, assisting. So we're definitely looking forward to, uh, you know, helping some, some folks out. We got um, some people checking in with from Baltimore, Louisiana. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some, some Navy, you know, some, you know, went from 20, we got a 20 to 80 uh, win uh, yesterday on a decision yesterday. So some pretty good stuff there going in the chat. Yeah, we got a shout out for coach Eddie. Shout out for Coach Gill, Jaime, Coach Sandra. Um, these are veterans that are already working with us, already experiencing um, the the progress and um, the guidance. So um, let's see, we've got one. A shout out for Ian. Mm -hmm. So thanks you guys for giving shout outs to your coach. It's really <laughs> nice. Um, awesome. Welcome to um, welcome to our our um, Facebook Live today. Yeah. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and get our disclaimer out of the way. We like to um, just give the first five minutes of the hour for our veterans to trickle in, make sure yeah. that they're able to see and connect with our uh, yeah. our video. Yeah, and you know, what I mean? I'll go ahead and um, we'll just um, kick it off with a, a brief disclaimer, as the Coach Jen mentioned, um, that. Uh, just a bit about VACI's elite program. We are not accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veteran Affairs, the VA. We are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions for a wide range of disability conditions. Thank you for getting that out of the way. Um, so before we jump into our topic, obviously just based on what um, the comments that are coming in, we've got a lot of veterans that are not already working with a veteran coach with FBA Claims Insider. So let us tell you a little bit about our program and about our organization, um, about one-on-one -on -one coaching, what the benefit of having a coach is, um, and how we're going to guide you through the process. So our intent is, our role is to provide you support and guidance as you're going through the VA claims process. So you come to us in the the situation that you're in, maybe you've never filed a claim before. Maybe um, you filed a claim, but you've had um, denial or multiple denials, or maybe you've done a great job and you've achieved um, a pretty good rating, but you feel like there may be more potential for you and you want us to help you with establishing um, the, the final potential. So that's what we do. We're going to help you to identify what your potential is. Um, and it's really important to be open to perspective and strategy. You may be coming to have a conversation with a coach um, with your mind dead set on, I need to have this service connected. Maybe a viable pathway, but maybe we can help you with um, additional pathways that may be more likely to be successful or even higher value. So we're going to start out with a strategy session. Um, and if you're, again, not already service or connected with a coach, you can, um, you can do a free discovery call with one of our representatives, kind of talk about where you're starting and they're gonna let you know, yep, this is the program for you. Definitely need to connect you with a coach or I don't know, I don't know that this might be the program for you. We're not gonna force everybody into our program and it's not always appropriate for every veteran. Um, but that's a little bit kind of about how a strategy session is gonna go um, for veterans that are not already connected with us, Mike. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we you, like you mentioned, the strategy session, looking at a path of least resistance, um, what makes the most sense, um, you know, based on what you what you have uh, to offer. We like to empower the veterans uh, that, that they have to do it. They provide the information. Um, it's the most important part uh, to them, you know, figuring it out. Uh, but along the way, you do get, um, you know, the guidance that's necessary from that education uh, and, and coaching perspective. Uh, uh, again, and sometimes it's just a matter of understanding symptoms, understanding uh things that you may have lived and experienced that you just didn't know uh, could could have some sort of disability rating. Um, um, and, and especially with our topic today, it's actually a perfect yeah. example. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, as as veteran coaches finding out, you know, um, again, our role is to empower you, to guide you through resources, education, um, understanding the rating criteria. Here's the condition that you're dealing with. How does the VA rate on that? What's relevant? Mm -hmm. um, and then we're always going to promote, always recommend supporting your claims with medical evidence. So strategy, education, and medical evidence. That's our whole program. Okay? SEM method. Absolutely. Strategy, education, and medical evidence. So we're going to um, encourage you, empower you, and guide and support you through the entire yeah. process yeah. through claim submission, through claim decision, and then where do we go from there? Yeah. And, and you'll get those. You talk a bit about claim submission, uh, CMP prep, compensation and pension exam prep, a, a, a very uh, staple 
uh, thing of what we do to help through that process. You know, the access to um, all of the live classes uh, via Zoom through VACI One, not unlike uh, what we got going on up to three times a day, uh, you get classes. We have the coffee with coaches form. Um, mental health exam preparation classes, medical exam uh, classes. I did one last last night, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, and so, yet again, you know, like Coach Jen mentioned, if there's any need, I think that, uh, that you can get get a discovery call if you want to learn more. If you aren't already connected uh, with the coach, um, you know, get that free discovery and kind of talk it over, and again, see if it, we're a good fit or not. Um, and I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. So we've kind of covered what our program entails. Okay. Um, and again, you know, through strategy development all the way through um, your CMP and your decision and where do we go from there? Um, so again, our, our role is to empower you. Um, sign up for a discovery call. Um, you're you're going to find out whether or not we're the right fit for you or not mm -hmm. uh, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so Let's talk about what is a presumptive disability. Um, that's why we're here. That's the information we're here to share from, with you. We're going to open up and take questions in a little bit also. Some questions may or may not be on topic, and that's fine. Um, we want to answer as much as we can. Um, but our primary, um, primary purpose here is to share some information about presumptive disabilities and more specifically um, toxic exposure based on a certain amount of time that may have been spent at Camp Lejeune. Um, so, Mike, do you want to kind of clarify for us what exactly is a presumptive condition? Yeah, yeah. So we'll go over just just a bit uh, because it's one of those things when we talk a bit about things that can get you connected or the way that they go. Oftentimes we'll start a conversation about um seen and treated for a condition on active duty or during active duty. Um, however, right, what a presumptive uh, is, it talks a bit about a VA presumptive disability and one where the VA presumes service connection, even if there's no specific nexus or meaning link or connection for that, uh, or ser for that service connection. Um, and so, you know, the idea is, is just as an example, uh, the presumptive disability might work like this. If you served at a specific location, location X, right? During a qualifying period, a specific time period, whatever they deem, you know, in, in that uh, uh, category and developed condition Y, a certain diagnosis or condition as a result, right? Of that, that uh, exposure or that service location and time, um, then the idea that the, the, the X location, you being there, you haven't served, plus the developing condition uh, as a result is a, is a presumed or automatic service connection, all right? And so, um, you know, talk about kind of the ease to win, right? I've seen things that might have kind of gone under presumptive, still not get connected necessarily. Um, so when you're dealing with an entity, ease is not necessarily the word, but it, it, it should be when you speak of straightforward nature, it seems um, that that those, as long as you can kind of prove that you were there, if you will, uh, fall under that presumptive uh, umbrella. So the way I usually say it is you didn't have to stop uh, and get treated for for that presumptive condition as long as the criteria, um, you know, show that you're eligible. Right. right. Um, because based on exposure, sometimes these conditions don't um, don't become evident until later on in life. So that's when, um, you know, we determine, OK, based on this condition, these specific diagnoses, and your time in this location, between these parameters, these specific parameters of time, you may be eligible for service connection based on the presumption that this diagnosis is related to that exposure. So um, one of the things that we run up against is that a veteran's di uh, documentation doesn't necessarily support that they were in that location at that specific time within those parameters. Um, but again, that's stuff that we we come up against, we can often overcome. Um, your DD-214 may not necessarily um, reference your service, um, again, at Camp Lejeune during and the specific years were 1953, August 1st 
1953 through December. Oh gosh, I lost thirty first of eighty seven. Eighty seven. You got it. <laughs> I had my cheat sheet up and I covered it up. Yeah. Um, so between those years, specifically um, related to Camp Lejeune, the eight specific diagnoses, the eight conditions that are currently being considered as presumptive of your time on Camp Lejeune related to toxic exposure are adult leukemia, aplastic anemia, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So those again are the specific conditions. But if you've served at Camp Lejeune and have developed any chronic health condition, it's important to speak to your medical provider whether or not you've been to about whether or not you've been exposed to toxic chemicals while stationed at Camp Lejeune. You may be eligible for benefits and compensation from the VA if it's determined that your illness was caused by exposure and contaminants at Camp Lejeune. So again, those eight conditions are the the listed absolutely green means go. These are presumptives. If this is your your diagnosis and it falls within these timeline parameters, then there's your service connection, okay? But there may be some gray area related to other conditions um, and that can certainly be developed. First things first, see your doctor. You need a diagnosis. And then you go forward with trying to um, get that presumptive or get it connected to the exposure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, it, it, a lot of times things will change or evolve or they might, um, you know, have certain things that they're going through process of adding. Uh, and so that's that's, you know, w you know, what we want to uh, speak about, uh, you know, like Jen mentioned uh, uh, today, um, Parkinson's disease being part of uh, the eight conditions also recognized as, 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 uh, as well. Um, and so. You know, what Jen mentioned, Coach Coach Jen mentioned, like you 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 can't get a connection if you don't discuss with your doctor if you don't have uh, a, a diagnosis. You can't think you have a condition, you know, if, if you will. Um, you you have to have that uh, diagnosis. Remember, maybe the DD two fourteen shows that time period at the camp uh, uh, Camp Lejeune. That's that X location plus Y, one of those official uh, uh, diagnoses, um, and then understanding. Uh, to put it forth in the in the eyes of the VA disability, um, and that's how you you get the connection. That's how you you, you get the presumptive uh, uh, connection that you you would need. So um, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, healthcare first, disability yeah. second, so to speak. You got to again have a diagnosis or, or have a condition. Uh, or even more importantly, um, at least effectively communicate your symptoms because you don't know what you have. If, if that also makes sense right? Uh, as well. Yep. So, and, and I mean, you bring up a really good point because for every condition, whether we're talking about presumptives, we're looking at the big picture. Medical evidence wins claims. And if you're going into a claim with a condition that's not been formally diagnosed, that you're not able to support with current relevant medical evidence, what's the complaint? What's the severity of your condition? This needs to be supported. Um, so you always need to see the doctor first. You're setting yourself up for success by going in with medical evidence. You're setting yourself up for higher likelihood of, of failure, of denial, if you don't have medical evidence to support your claim. Um, so just separate of, of presumptives and overall, medical evidence wins claims. Okay? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we are talking about the Camp Lejeune, um, the Camp Lejeune presumptives here today, and this is really part of kind of a series. So um, we're going to be doing more lives specifically about other scenarios where presumptives are um, associated. So the PAC Act, Vietnam, but we can answer some questions related to those as well. We just wanted to make sure we get the information out there about the Camp Lejeune exposure. There's a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of commercials, um, a lot of lawsuits. But it, more than anything, a lot of questions. So being able to put those dates out there, these are the parameters between mm -hmm. 1953 and 1987. These are the dates, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and these are the conditions. So being able to put that out there and eliminating some of the 
questions um, or the unknown for a lot of our, our Lejeune veterans or family members, um, you know, wives, kids, um, that time of, of extends to them as well. Um, so just making sure we're kind of clearing up that that gray area. Yeah, no doubt. And and, and uh, again, it, because because it can be so so many questions about it or, um, you know, n not having the specific diagnosis uh, that's on the list. I think part of it is just educating uh, veterans to to uh, one, you know, just ask the question. Well, I, yeah, I was in you know Camp Lejeune, but two, um, it, I think it encourages uh, individuals to be more proactive about what's going on in their own health care, right? Um, you know, cross-referencing, well, what do I have? What have doctors been saying about me, uh, so to speak, in my records? Um, and, and and not just feeling like life is life, um, you know, uh, where you might not deserve it, right? Having a sense, uh, when you talk about the conditions, you know, aplastic anemias and, and, and leukemias um, and the cancers associated with that, you know, uh, that water contamination and, and no those disabilities, how they came about. Sometimes people they just just think they you know got something later on, uh, but as as the rules have become more clear and as you get an understanding about how to, um, I think that's more most important you know part of uh, of today's uh, life for you. And like Coach Jen said, um, we're going to be expanding on uh, the series uh, in a bit, covering other areas um, you know that that also have uh, uh, some presumptive uh, with these unusual exposures as well. So with that being said, um, Dennis Sitter has thrown a question in about the presumptive conditions associated with Agent Orange. And this is a pretty long list. Um, I recommend um, if, you, if you can go to vaclaimsinsider.com and type in Vietnam presumptives, and it'll take you to not only Vietnam, but the other conditions that are or the other locations that are considered within the Agent Orange exposure area. But I'm going to go down the list. Um, it's, again, a pretty long list. I'm going to read and pronounce as best I can the um, Agent Orange presumptive conditions. Um, they're looking at chloracne or similar acne form diseases, type 2 diabetes, Hodgkin's disease, ischemic heart disease, chronic B-cell leukemias, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Parkinson's disease, peripheral neuropathies, porphyra cutanea tarda, check me out, <laughs> prostate cancer, lung cancer, bronchial cancer, larynx cancer, trachea cancer, adult fibrosarcoma, sarcoma, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, yep. malignant fibrous histiocytoma, liposarcoma, sarcoma, leomyosarcoma, yep. that one's going to get me, sarcoma, epithelioid le. The old myoblastoma. <laughs> Rhabdomyosarcoma. Ectomycian chymoma. Yeah. <laughs> angiosarcoma. Proliferating angio. Okay. Endotheomatosis. Malignant glomus tumor. Malignant hemangioparasitoma. Synovial sarcoma. Malignant giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, malignant schwannoma, malignant mesenchymoma, malignant granular cell tumor, alveolar soft part sarcoma, epithelioid sarcoma, clear cell sarcoma of tendons, extraskeletal Ewing sarcoma, congenital and infantile, infantile fibrosarcoma, malignant ganglioneuroma, bladder cancer, hypothyroidism, Parkinsonism, high blood pressure, and monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. So yeah. I'm almost sorry that I took off on that. I <laughs> killed um, a lot of time and I'm, I'm sorry about that. But again, Agent Orange is known to have kind of fingered in with a lot of cancers 
um, as you can see by the list, heart disease, um, the Parkinsonisms, the, the Parkinsonisms, so um, a lot of symptomology that's not necessarily a formal diagnosis for Parkinson's, but right. um, kind of <laughs> kind of took no, off the no, with that. <laughs> I think it's necessary. I mean, you know, we we started with the Camp Lejeune, but I, I you know, true thing is are uh, the uncommons, right? And 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 that question uh, that somebody had had out there is a similar one. I think somebody asked about like asbestos exposure. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely something we could um we'll 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 continue to 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 throw in it. I think it's important. I think even just from a coaching standpoint, sometimes you you don't you haven't committed a histoplasmosis <laughs> right to, to, to memory, right? If we're being honest. And so like the the um the strategy component, that's what we say. What what do you have, right? Um, you know, what what do you have? What does an, an individual have? And I think it's it's really Im, Im, important um, to throw it out there, uh, even through the tongue twisters, right? You yeah. know, just just knowing it all, because somebody may have recognized something that might yeah. appear in their exactly. list. Um, no doubt about it, right? It's almost one of those if you know. Uh, you know, kind of things. And we're going to put the, uh, I'll make sure we put the uh, presumptive list. I'll throw it out in the chat uh, as sure. well. Um, you know, but yeah, I think, I thought you did great. You did great. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Ivan had a question about can, about toxic fumes. And I know this is something that's ongoing. So can fumes coming out from an aircraft um, be considered toxic, toxic, hazardous, and part of presumptive conditions? So this is something that has been up for discussion. Toxic fumes, um, fire foam, uh, JP8 and JP4, um, the, the jet fuels. So there are a lot of things that there's ongoing conversations trying to determine what is the level of exposure? What are the common conditions that are developing related to these exposures? And then how do we connect them? So um, I think there's just a lot a currently a gray area, but as long as you have a diagnosis and you believe that there's a link, um, you are, you're encouraged to, to, um, to develop that, get your diagnosis, um, you know, get with your, with your provider, get with Telemedica, see if there is scientifically a link, um, you know, based on case studies um, and, and work on it, you know, don't just, you know, if there, there's a possibility that there's links that are beyond the presumptive. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the presumptives um, because, again, there's so much gray area and the VA, they want to do right by the veterans. Believe it or not, um, I choose to believe that the VA wants to do right by the veterans. Nobody chooses to work with veterans um, to, to not be able to enable and promote positivity um, with the outcomes. So mm -hmm. I don't believe that the VA is um, bad guys and I don't believe that they're trying to deny. I think they have to do their due diligence. Um, and that again, you know what, I'm going to say it, medical evidence wins claims. Yeah, um, It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. See right. the doctor. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I, I'll see, I'll, I'll find myself saying similar thing. It's not about what you have. It's about what you can prove. Medical evidence D does trump it like so sometimes again just dd214 i think uh uh you know michael in uh in the chat man people we can't uh it's not a free talking chat like some of the other forms that we that we do have um but he might not have had a camp lejeune exposure but he has an asbestos exposure you know for for example um um and so again uh the evidence what do you have current conditions uh what's in your medical records yeah. right a lot of times those strategy sessions might turn into the first time um you know that somebody's hearing about a thing uh you know just in you know in general and so then learning uh how to prove it is is really the situation that, that we find ourselves in first thing is knowing that something can be linked um you know and the next thing is kind of learning through process of of your clinical information data you know medical information um how to connect it uh in general terms and so medical evidence medical yeah. evidence medical evidence you can't say it enough i'm seeing a lot of veterans that are you know i'm having lung problems and served in the gulf war um I had jet fuel and drinking water and so all of these veterans a lot of veterans are 
identifying not only their location of exposure, but the outcome. Okay, present the um, the toxic fumes, blue water. Um, so mm -hmm. that that's part Agent Orange. These are all part um, of per pursuit. So you've got um, an in-service event. You may have the parameters for meeting that criteria. Now, bring your medical evidence and bring your date of service to the table um, and start looking at those presumptives for service connection. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are putting in here, I served, I served here. Presumption that doesn't seem to deal, apply to Gulf War vets. Um, so the PAC Act, I think, really speaks to the Gulf War exposures. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's th the particulate matter, um, the burn pits. Um, I think that the, the PAC Act really is starting back in the Desert Storm area and or time frame and moving towards the current um, Afghanistan, well, the Middle East um, locations of service. So um, a lot of these things, see the doctor, see the doctor, formally diagnosed with the presumptive conditions, that's how you're going to see success. And whether it's Lejeune, whether it's PAC Act, whether it's, it, you got to start with the doctor. Um, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, um, but that's really the key. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. It's just one third of any, any claim. You won't get one if you don't have, a, you know, that active uh, diagnosis. And now actually, you know, quite a bit of Gulf War presumptive, uh, uh, you know, that that do come into play. Um, it, when people talk a bit about like proving, you know, the records when we rem remember with presumptives, proving that you were there. So usually like your duty 214, wherever there is, remember, or location X. And then the second thing is, do I have this diagnosis? You can't think you have, uh, you know, an airway or cancer or, or something. It has to be in, in, in the record. And then appropriately submitting, um, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the right way. And so when we see things like, hey, I'm waiting for records or I'm waiting for this, sometimes that does comes up, come up with certain conditions. But sometimes with the presumptives, um, just having your DD-214 and having that active uh, condition, maybe even if you get with a coach and strategize, if that's where you are in the process, um, you can try things without thinking you have this big stack or volume of records that's just not in your current possession. Right. So so again, even with a, a slim or void or absence of certain records, you think that, you know, uh, uh, you're waiting on certain claims can still be looked at and, and may be a benefit to 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 start or to go through the process, knowing and identifying as long as you were in a, in a place with presumptive conditions or of an exposure, whether it be radiation, asbestos, Camp Lejeune, right, burn pits. Yep. Um, and even though we're kind of focusing on some of these that we're doing with uh, Coach Jen and I uh, to, today, again, just expect uh, the, the further series to continue to roll out uh, further live to get the other information uh, covered, if that won't be covered in our question and answer before we wrap up. Uh, but it, it might not be the this great volume or need for records that that the process seems to kind of put on veterans, you know, that that invisible weight of I don't have, you know, my records there. Right. So it's always worth a, a strategy thought or coaching or some some questions about a condition. Um, but go to the doctors is a standard uh, yep. uh, thing. And we say go to the doctors. I'm sorry, Jim, but we say go to the doctors. And I keep saying or I'll reiterate communicate, communicate, effective communicate. Because when we say get your butt to the doctors or go to the doctors, that does seem like, hey, taking a day off or time off if you're not retired, traveling down or up wherever that is, and then sitting in a waiting room and then, you know, that kind of thing. But um, what I reference a lot is even if you're communicating, for example, communicate your symptoms with the doctors doesn't look like take a visit off for me necessarily. It might look like, hey, my doctor has a portal. You see the figures. I love it. <laughs> yes. Send a message from home. 
Okay, send a message from your couch or your 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 phone or your, wherever you are that speaks to. But like using those kinds of tools, uh, you know, VA secure message. Some private doctors have these these portals allows you to kind of get the symptoms out to express and just explain yourself, and you don't have to rely on you know days or weeks in between, and then having the the, the, the person kind of hear you. So it always helps with some of these, especially some of these um, conditions that have some subjective or kind of gray area symptoms to them. Okay. Um, you know, just to make sure you're complaining uh, effectively. Yeah. And I'm, I'm watching Michael making a lot of comments about not being able to obtain his records. VSOs can't get his records. Um, you know, he's, he's reached out to the American Legion, the DAV, VSOs, National Archives have told him that they're lost. And you know what? It's, probably true. Um, there have been a good amount of records that have been lost or destroyed, um, and they may not be able to be found or located, but that's okay. All right. Listen, if we, you can't develop a claim based on missing records, don't spin your wheels. Don't spin your wheels. Develop what you can. Okay. Develop what you can, you know, what you can get service connected develop your secondaries from there. Don't spin your wheels and don't put yourself in park waiting for records. Work on your current health conditions. Look at your DD-214, your time, place of service, your MOS. Get with a coach and develop what's the potential. What's the potential here? Maybe we don't have records to go all the way back from 2023 to 1994 to service connect your knee. That's a really big fight. And let's, let's, get with a coach and talk about a path of lesser resistance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is obviously off of the presumptive conversation, but don't put yourself in park or, you know, go through a few different options to try to request your records, but don't wait, get to work on something, mm -hmm. kick in um, a gateway condition, um, work on a low value claim that can gateway you to a higher value claim. Perspective and strategy is so important to being successful. Don't tunnel vision on it has to be my knee. Let's talk about other options. Let's talk about how to get you on the board and get you successful. Mm -hmm. So that's always another way. Okay. Um, so don't give up on finding your records, but don't sit in park um, waiting for your records to show up before you take action. Uh, that's a very, very good point. And um, try not to let the, the process frustrate you to a halt, just like 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 you mentioned. Uh, oftentimes, veterans might be looking at a, a back or a knee that they know they, they that bothered them. Maybe they didn't go see anybody then, um, but missing out on uh, the presumptive part. Remember, in location X, have condition Y, X plus Y equals the presumptive connection right and so so uh a big 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 part continue to pound the, the word education um you know because learning about your condition uh is the point right learning then how to prove it so to speak is the other part of of, of the point and so um just like Jen said, just encouraging uh that education encouraging that learning uh you know tool and being a proactive part of, of, of your process, right? Of your own personal process. Okay. Um, somebody, even George had mentioned, George Temple had mentioned uh, in the chat about uh, meeting service guidelines uh, for presumptive uh, uh, conditions and, and having a, a piece of medical evidence finally resurface in his medical records after being denied since 2005. It's a big deal, right? So that's actually an example of maybe somebody requests records um, and they're in whatever limbo or uh, a new old thing pops up that that uh, shows a presumptive or, or some connection. Um, and so some of those things actually do happen all the time. I think uh, for Coach Jen mentioning one of veterans, Michael, before. That's why, uh, it, do you have something to work at while you're waiting out um, anything else that might be going on or already in process? Uh, but this is why the presumptive, presumptive, presumptive connection, you know, uh, in these conditions can be the claim starter, the jump starter to, to uh, uh, a longer process uh, to connect your conditions uh, for you, no doubt. 
Um, these are really great questions. And I just kind of scrolled back up to see if we missed any. And I see one from T-Charger. Um, I have a diagnosis for a presumptive condition, but I don't have access to the original diagnosis due to how many years ago it was. I do have a current prescription for this diagnosis. Will this work? Um, you know what? Um, if you have a diagnosed condition that is on the presumptive list and you meet the criteria, run it all the way up run it all the way up, go see your doctor, get it, um, get your records updated um, to show that this is a current diagnosis. You're currently participating in a treatment plan, i.e. your prescription, um, and then um, and then run it up. Um, again, diagnosis, location within those date parameters, there's your service connection. Um, and really, when you have X and Y, you have service connection. It's really that easy. So the rating comes from the severity, okay? So there's two parts to developing a claim. You wanna develop the service connection. You wanna meet all three sides of the Calusa triangle, in-service event, um, current diagnosis or current complaint, and then the link between the two. Um, with presumptives, the link is the word presumptive. Um, but you you want to make sure that you are developing all the sides of the of the of the triangle, um, and it's a lot easier to develop all three of those when the VA gives you one. Um, so again, you have a diagnosis. You're participating in a treatment plan. You're taking meds for this diagnosis. Get some current documentation to show this is your diagnosis, um, and run and run it up. Yeah, no doubt. Um, uh just in general, I think we had the link for the presumptive. Uh, some of the, the the VA Claims Insider blog that we had uh, about the presumptive list explained does a really, really good job of um, breaking down the 200 plus conditions, right? Is it, is it in there? Um, yeah, exactly. The present, Yeah, that one. <laughs> really, really good job, especially for... Um, some of the 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 ones I think we saw somebody had you know mentioned radiation, uh, some other things down in there, but it break uh, asbestos um, breaks it down and gets real specific and slows down uh, some of those diagnoses, all right? And that even that blog post might be a good reference list for veterans unknowingly uh, to cross reference their medical records, right? You look at any grouping of medical records and, uh, you know, maybe it's slightly, but just connected to this presumptive, cross reference it with your past medical history list, right? You know, the, 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 the part where you see, and if you, if you have no idea, right? Get an idea, so to speak, Get right? Getting your records, you know, look at them, ask a doctor for your visit notes. If it's online, you can just kind of get them uh, directly. And so reading up on the, the the information about the VA presumptive list, being specific to to uh, where you are um, and then go from there is, is a good is a good thought process. So I'm seeing a lot of veterans who are talking about denials and they have questions about their denials. Let me tell you. Um, it may be somewhat convoluted and hard to follow, but your decision narrative often gives you all of the answers. It's going to tell you exactly what's missing. Um, it's going to use a lot of words and it's going to talk in circles. Um, but interpreting your decision narrative, um, your denial letter is going to give you a lot of information. It's going to tell you maybe, um, your presumptive, con your condition could be linked presumptively, but you're not formally diagnosed, but we need to know more information. That's what they're telling you. We need more information. They're trying to be as specific as possible um, with letting you know what it is um, that they're missing, but they have to use certain words. And I know that was one thing that, that was really frustrating to my husband when he was a Raider, when he had veterans that were so close and so deserving, but it came down to semantics and he couldn't just grab the phone and call the veteran and say, dude, you're so close. He had to send out that convoluted decision narrative that really is frustrating and hard to understand. And it's 12 pages long. And where do I start? And what's the point? Um, but really, if you sit down and you decipher, take apart or get with your coach, we read these things all day, every day. We know what the keywords are. We know how to help you um, to decipher that and see exactly what they're asking for. But go back to your decision narrative 
review your decision, decision narrative. They're telling you in most cases exactly what's missing. And it may be everything. It may be everything. I can't see that there is an in-service event. I don't have the documentation to show me that you actually served in this location, but don't give up. Um, get creative, get with a coach and look at some different options to be able to prove that you served in this location. If you can't find your DD-214, go to va.gov, search up your service verification letter. Okay, that's gonna tell you the periods of service that you're eligible for federal benefits, okay? There are other resources. Don't get stuck on, again, your service treatment records or your personnel file or your DD-214. There are other ways to support your time in, this, in the military, um, to support your potential exposure, to support um, a potential injury, okay? Mm -hmm. So always be open to perspective and strategy when you're working with the VA on claims, especially if you're getting denials. But let the VA tell you, let them show you their hand a little bit. It's gonna guide you down the right direction. And I, I'm i with you, trying to interpret a decision narrative. Um, I have, I speak one language, I read one language. VA is not that language. <laughs> I'm getting better with it, I'm getting better with it. Um, I know what I'm looking for when I look at a decision narrative. And, um, with a little bit of guidance, you can be able to interpret what you're seeing in those letters as well. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point, uh, especially with a lot of uh, some of the denial uh, questions um, that have come up um, just in general. That letter can be daunting. Uh, Jen, I, I tell this just uh it's not a joke, it's the truth, but like um, the detailed decision letter, right? That's the name. But it, <laughs> the first, you know, year or so, like you thought it was a denial letter, right? You thought it was entitled, uh, the title, denial letter. Well, it's not a denial letter, right. it's a detailed no. decision letter, right? Decision narrative. So, so, so sometimes that decision narrative says, uh, I've seen, you know, see, you say you, you, you lost because the, veteran didn't get an x-ray for something or didn't show up for for an exam so not to go too far off topic i think it ties in with some of the questions but um to your point i think uh deciphering that if you gotta have coaching you know working through some of those things um are really really important because it is in effect or does have a road map it'll tell you what you need what's missing more often hey there's a missing nexus or link um or no diagnosis right and so somebody asked a question javier uh, asked, asked a question um about uh, trying or serving in gulf war uh and providing evidence uh, just in general demolition of uh, munitions and bunkers and exposed to certain uh, 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 toxic uh, gases he put in for Gulf War illness and was denied, right? Instead, he said they, they gave him fibromyalgia. And the question was, uh, should, you know, should he put in Gulf War illness again? And so without getting too far in the strategy and things like that, that's what coaching is for. But like the first thing that popped up in my head was, were you officially diagnosed uh, with with uh, Gulf War illness, right? Versus was your diagnosis of your multiple uh, issues a true fibromyalgia uh, in, in nature? And so that's what it means, I think, to get clarity uh, in the process um, to get you know see a diagnosis. And you can't just go to the doctor and just ask for these diagnoses. Is that's not just how healthcare works? But you can again effectively communicate uh, uh, your symptoms and even through previously denied, um, you know, things, there's, there, there are action steps to do uh, that will be appropriate to try to reverse or, 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 or turn over a denial, okay? Uh, another question with Stephanie, um, uh, Birch had made, uh, once you get a denial and a, or you refile, do they back pay you from the original denial date or just from the new file date? Um, so, uh, Jen, I don't know how you, you answer this, but like, Basically, the intent to file date. So if you if you tried something five years ago and did, you did not continuously year on end try to uh, uh, work that or adjudicate that, that claim, then it would run out a year after the attempted or after the, uh, the decision. You have a year from the decision date 
right, to continue that fight, continue that claim. Um, you can still fight a claim that's previously denied beyond a year, but you lose the entitlement to the back pay if you go beyond a year, uh, Stephanie, uh, for those things that are denied. I hope I answered that question. I wasn't too. Here's how uh, <laughs> I how here's how I, how I explain it. And I did see another question from Stephanie that I want to get to also. Here's how I explain it. I liken um, effective date to a volleyball game. Okay, so intent to file, file the claim for initial review. If a dial or you're underrated, file an HLR. That preserves that action, the higher level review, taking that claim, removing it from the raters and sending it up to a higher level review to have all that same evidence re-reviewed. That continues to keep the ball moving. Okay, once the ball hits the floor, if you're denied on HLR, then your effective date starts over, okay? So the best way to um, make sure that you're filing a fully developed, well-supported claim for initial review, but if it's not successful, take that evidence through to the higher level review to still maintain that effective date. If that's not successful, the ball hits the floor, new effective date, but then you're filing a supplemental claim with new and relevant evidence to have that, that same condition um, reconsidered for success. So really that's when really the longest, the, the longest is, you know, extending that, that one year, getting your HLR filed within that one year. And if you're not successful on higher level review, then you're starting over. Mm -hmm. um, so the days of five or six years of back pay um, within the, um, I think it's the, was it the, oh my gosh, the new, <laughs> the new, mm -hmm. um, Appeals laws and since 20, 2017, I believe, or 2019. Um, so those long waits, unless you're up with the, the BBA for an actual appeal, those long waits and those long um, back pay, those big back pay checks are, are kind of done away with. But the benefit of that is you're getting your decisions much faster. You know, nope, not going to fly. I need more. What else do you got? Okay. So we're, you can keep the ball moving and uh, essentially see success far sooner than if you would had you gone to the BBA. Mm -hmm. The other, oh, yay, answered perfectly. <laughs> we did good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. She had another question. Can you still help a veteran if they can't obtain a DD-214? Yes. So again, um, you can, there's different ways for you to request to get that DD-214. We have some resources we can share with you. Um, the other option is go to va.gov, search your letters, um, and look for service verification letter. And again, that's going to show the honorable periods of service that your husband is eligible for federal benefits um, for related to those dates. So it's kind of a workaround. We still want to see the DD-214. It's going to tell us tons more than that service verification letter, but at least you have the dates of eligibility, and that's really important. Um, and one more question that I wanted to get to, I think was Rohan. Um, I served in Somalia and Iraq and I was denied for allergic rhinitis. The reason I wanted to go to this question is because of what we talked about previously. Mm -hmm. Look at your decision narrative. They're going to tell you exactly why. Maybe you have allergies, you have all the symptoms, but you're not formally diagnosed with allergic rhinitis, or maybe you didn't file within the parameters, um, has to have um, developed to a rateable severity, compensable severity within the 10 years. So there's still work that may need to be done um, for, for, for service connection on this condition, but refer to your decision narrative and let it give you the, the pathway. Bring it to a coach, let them help you decipher it, let them help you put together the, the, the documentation that you may need to su support that for success. Um, but yeah, get on, get on the phone, um, jump up and jump on the website and get signed up for a discovery call. They will be able to tell you if what you're dealing with is something that we could help you out with. Um, side note, you can request a specific coach. So if you wanted to join VA Claims Insider and have either me or Doc to be your coach, um, I think they'll go ahead and they'll put up our links so you can sign up directly with us. It'll take you to our landing page. Um, 
uh, on the VA Claims Insider website, go through the sign up options, and you'll be automatically assigned to either Doc or to me. Absolutely, absolutely. No, this is a, uh, it's a lot of information. Uh, you know, we we when we did our prep meeting, Jen, uh, I think we talked a bit about the excitement to again learn the uncommon, relearn the uncommon, brush up on the uncommon, and with those lists can be pretty extensive, and sometimes again things change, and so. I just want to reiterate some of the uh, the links that were placed in that, that goes to the uh, blog posts uh, because whether you had asbestos, whether you had radiation, you know, that's a good education tool to start with. It breaks down and goes over the specific diagnoses. That's something, again, that you can start to cross-reference uh, with your own in information. Um, and I just, uh, you know, to, to, to your point about, do you have allergic rhinitis versus is it called something else, you know, is, is a real thing. And so I, I just, you know, this is, it's been a good volume of information, yeah. uh, today, no doubt. I feel like, I mean, we certainly can't get to all the questions and we do our very best. Anybody who didn't get their questions answered, please know, um, that we've got people behind the scenes. We have, um, 30 and Genesee, they're absolutely amazing. They're keeping your comments right in front of us. So we're able to see them. They're posting the links as we're referring to them. So anything that's not answered, they're going to be doing their due diligence and responding to your questions. Um, so anybody who is frustrating or feeling like you're not heard, we apologize. Um, we're doing our very best to get as many questions answered as possible. Your questions will be answered. Um, and 30 and Genesee will get to that. They're absolutely incredible. Um, and we appreciate them facilitating this live for us. I want to grab one more question. Um, I see Christopher Murray. Um, I served during the Gulf War. However, I did not tour um, in the Gulf. I, I was only stateside. Do I qualify? And the answer um, is most likely no. Um, it's based on your service in the region um, and the exposure based on being in the Gulf or in the Middle East. So um, if you spent time um, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, in Afghanistan, and, you know, in the, in the region, um, that would meet the parameters for the date and location of service. Um, so unfortunately, even though you were serving during the Gulf War and supporting the war itself, um, unfortunately, the exposure and the presumptives um, are not going to be applicable. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're not eligible for service connection. So please, Right. Please don't, you know, put your head down and walk away. Understand right. that there's a really good likelihood based on your time on active duty. This is like your your workman's comp for working for the federal government. OK, the benefits don't stop when you don't work there. If you you developed a condition, um, if you you have an injury that has persisted throughout the years, there's a good likelihood that you can be service connected and the benefits are waiting for you. You're not going to take away from anybody else. There's not anybody who is more disabled than you, who deserves it more than you. You served, you deserved. These are your benefits. You're not going to take away from anybody. And there's not one veteran who has a condition that they're dealing with that is the result of their time on active duty that doesn't deserve benefits. So let me be very clear. Just like Brian Reese says, you served, you deserved. Let us help you to develop the benefits that you deserve. Yeah, no, that was excellent, Jen. And you know, before we get to a recap about about today, I thought, thought the point that you made: don't let the fact that you might have served stateside and maybe not a deployment history think you just might not have anything on the presumptive list. It doesn't mean you don't have a claim or disability condition. So that just might be one thing or whatever thing that you may be missing um, in that, but don't let it stop you. I thought that was an excellent point, uh, uh, Jen. And then, um, you know, be, be, somebody mentioned, I didn't, not to kind of get too far off, we, we're coming on top of the hour, um, but like, yes, like you get medication. Yes, we're just going to talk about that, the book. Yeah, <laughs> medication, double check your records, tends to count. Sometimes you see medication prescribed without it, but yes is the short answer. That's act assessment and plan of okay. healthcare, and you have to attach that medication to a diagnosis. So yep. um, yes is, is the short answer, but this has been been good, you know, yes. um, you know, with the idea, with education, medical evidence, 
get your one-on-one and your strategy session up yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, get your free call, um, you know, scheduled today. Uh, definitely look forward to helping veterans. Let's follow up on Michael's last comment. Um, Brian's new book is out and available. It's available to order from Amazon. You deserve it. The second edition is out now. Brian was on live YouTube and Facebook yesterday um, launching his second edition. So go get it. Um, And it's really exciting. Um, We're waiting for, um, we're waiting for our copies. So you may actually get yours before we get ours, but go get it. Amazing information. Brian Reese is always putting out his passion and sharing the information that you can all, you do this, you deserve this. So that's the name of the book. You deserve it. Second edition. Thank you guys for joining us today. Doc, thank you so much. It was great. I love hosting with you today. Absolutely. Guys, we are Facebook Live every Wednesday. We have live coaching sessions once you join the Elite Program um, regularly. Get a coach, get to work, and get what you deserve. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys.